At the end of 2021, the governing body for motorsport, the FIA, was in a transitional phase. The president, John Tott, had served the maximum term limit of three and would be leaving his post at the end of the year. After having won multiple World Rally Championships with Peugeot, multiple Formula One World Championships with Ferrari and Michael Schumacher, got married to Michelle Yeoh and served the maximum term limit as FIA president, Ludhair had won at life. His tenure, however, wasn't marked with unanimous approval and there was hope that whoever would take his place would inject a wealth of fresh ideas for how to progress the sport of motor racing across the globe. Come in with that gusto attitude, the one that says screw tradition and embrace the future. And so, it's a new FIA president, Mohammed bin Suleim. For a little bit of backstory on this guy, he was a 14-time rally champion in the Middle East before embarking on a career in the political side of the sport as you do. In 2005, he took over as president of the UAE Racing Operations and has held that title ever since. Apparently, he used his power to help organize the first Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2009 and even got to sample some Formula 1 machinery himself, which went well. In 2008, he became a member of the World Motorsports Council and five years later, he was appointed chairman of the Motorsport Development Task Force, with the group's aim being pretty self-explanatory. All of this eventually brought him to the election of 2021, where he beat John Todd's former aide, Graham Stoker, to be voted in as the newest president of the FIA. And after three years upon his throne, the reaction to his reign thus far has been terrible. So, what's going on? Immediately into his tenure, MBS walked into a, shall we say, turbulent time in the world of motorsport. Sure, the FIA sees over virtually all sport that involves four wheels and an engine, but the Formula One World Championship is the one with the most eyes on it. And after that night in Abu Dhabi, there was mass fallout with regards to how that championship ended. Whatever one's feelings were from that race, or even well before that race, matter of fact, the inescapable truth was that Michael Massey's position as race director was untenable. The role of race director may not be an easy one, but a changing of the guard was required, and thus came in Eduardo Freitas and Niels Wittich, who would alternate the role of race director between them, and a new set of driving standard guidelines were introduced to help with the adjudication of incidents during overtaking attempts. So initially, there were some good signs, signs that this new presidency would deliver on the promise. But pretty soon, the FIA began to fry some very weird fish. Back in 2005, a rule was introduced that forbid body piercings and other bits of jewellery being worn by the driver during on-track sessions on the grounds of safety. But ever since that rule was put in place, the FIA had largely turned a blind eye to it because when it comes to a 50 or 100 G crash, a nipple piercing probably ain't gonna be the thing that sends you to the great bed bath and beyond. But almost immediately after MBS took over, his eye turned upon the ruling and thought, Hang on a minute. For some really strange reason, they seem to be adamant that the rule would be enforced, and that would have been a particular problem for Sir Lewis Hamilton, who, in response to this nonsense, showed up wearing every bit of jewelry that he owned, or at least what he had in the vicinity at the time. Basically to say, Screw your ruling. The drama seemed to fade away quietly, only for it to be brought back up again later that year. It was said that the first offense risked a $52,000 fine, which, you know, that's a lunch bill to Lewis. But that repeat offenses could result in a quarter of a million in fines and a potential loss of championship points, which is a bit much for a freaking nose stud. Sure, he may not have written the rule, but considering it was only really enforced when Ben Soliem came in, people were looking at him strangely, and it would only get better. That aforementioned program of having two race directors on a rotating schedule was beginning to piss off the drivers. Seasoned veteran and voice of relative reason, Sebastian Vettel, left the driver's meeting early out of frustration. He was subsequently rewarded with a 25,000 euro fine, but he wasn't alone in this. Multiple drivers were starting to crack the shits about this whole thing, and you couldn't really blame them, because after all, these are the drivers of the world championship. They know the sport better than any of us wannabes, and soon they would get their wish, albeit inadvertently when Freitas mishandled a safety car scenario in Japan, which, for those of us with 2014 still fresh in our minds, went beyond the realms of infuriating. After an investigation, Freitas left his post, and Wittich was left as the sole race director. In January next year, Ben Soliam vowed never to have a sole race director again, only to say a month later that they will only have one race director for that season. 
Still though, probably not the most embarrassing thing that he had done over those past couple of months. In that same Grand Prix where Freitas was thrown to the wolves, Max Verstappen won his second world championship. And yet despite that, no one really knew that at the time. It was thought, because of how short the race was, that only half points would be rewarded, as is the case with shortened races. But thanks to some dodgy wording of the regulations, four points were rewarded and Max was left with a dim celebration of a title, whilst more bad light was shone upon the FIA. Although MBS was quick to defend himself with some mighty awkward throwing under the buses. And one thing you said about Japan, Japan you said was controversial, no. The FIA was blamed for the points, but it was not the FIA which made the rules. It was the teams who made the rules and we were implementing it. So thank you for the- Okay, current. okay guys. Yes, <laughs> you see? Let's stay focused. No. Uh, to me, it's very, very clear about the FIA and we do that. Uh, so thank you very much. He is that was, uh, that was painful. That was some painful levels of cringe. That was some mighty dirty laundry that you just ate out there, Muhammad. Following the race, the ruling was changed so that 75% of the race distance must be covered before four points could be rewarded. But it really could have come about without this public service announcement. He was exhibiting main character syndrome in doing this and ditto too with the whole jewelry thing and with his decree to ban political, religious and or personal messages without the prior approval of the FIA, the driver's freedom was regressing despite his earlier comments that he didn't mind what views drivers had and that they should be free to display them. But now they couldn't do that. And soon he decided to limit their vocabulary as well. In September 2024, he started to get angsty and bitchy about driver swearing. Because of course, if there is one thing that racing drivers never, ever, ever do, it's swear. Not at all. Never. If you were to go to any racing event, grassroots or international, and patch yourself into any racing driver comms, you would never hear cursing. And so, when Verstappen let slip some of the swearing in a press conference, this set off something in MBS. He now started to put pressure on the officials to penalize drivers who spoke the language of the slums. In an exclusive interview with Motorsport.com, he made mention that they had to differentiate between our sport, motorsport, and rap music. Right. Because when George Russell swears, for example, I definitely see him as a rapper and not some private schoolboy whose Netflix starts buffering on some of the raunchy scenes of Downton Abbey. It was clear why MBS drew that comparison and it was all kinds of fucking rancid. After Charles Leclerc was also handed punishment for swearing whilst talking to the press, the Grand Prix Drivers Association issued a strongly worded statement to the FIA, basically saying, treat us like adults and grow the fuck up. But all of these are pretty petty things, at least compared some of the more serious accusations that went his way. In March 2024, a whistleblower informed the FIA that Bin Suleim had attempted to overturn a penalty for Fernando Alonso in the previous year's Saudi Arabian Grand Prix by attempting to contact and persuade the FIA's Vice President for Sport in the Middle East, who was at the track in an official capacity. An investigation into the matter would follow suit, but not before yet another controversy would rear its head, with it being alleged that he attempted to persuade race officials to not certify the new Las Vegas track in time for the inaugural Grand Prix in 2023. Now, to play devil's advocate, safety in the sport is paramount, so making sure the racetrack is airtight and without fault is pertinent, and with some manhole covers coming unglued during practice, such concerns were valid. However, the whistleblower accusation has made it seem as if the intentions were indeed nefarious. So what else? Oh yeah, there was that complete shit show where Susie Wolf's name was dragged through the mud owing to a conflict of interest inquiry by the FIA, which was withdrawn pretty damn quickly. But not before this whole debacle once again placed Ben Suleim's leadership under question and Susie, quite understandably, subsequently launching legal action. That set of driving standard guidelines mentioned before? Well, that was hitting troubles as well, as drivers felt that they weren't up to scuff, coming off the back of Max Verstappen being pretty damn crafty when it came to working around said rules. Eventually Eventually the pressure for Ben Suleim was mounting and he had to step back from day-to-day -day operations to let the heat die down. And yet, he still found himself in the thick of controversy on an almost consistent basis. It seems as if this man has been dipping his hand into one too many cookie jars and the chickens are now coming home to roost. All of what I've mentioned so far in this video has been a very basic version of events. And for certain, there's been some stuff that I've omitted because, well, we only have so many hours in the day and there are most likely more issues lurking beneath that we're just 
100% aware of at this time. We talked about untenable before, well how much longer before this gets to that point. Now, he claims to have been a victim of character assassination via the press, saying that he's been vilified and hated and that the FIA as a whole has also been thrown to the wolves, with none of their accomplishments and hard work being recognized. And to be fair, he does have a point there. The FIA does deserve some credit where it's due for advancements in the sport that's been spearheaded by them. They do a lot of good work and it does need to be said, but they do also need to be called out on their shortcomings because there is a standard set with them since they run the sport. And besides the point, this video isn't strictly about the FIA as a whole. This is about one dude and his governance of the sport. And so far, it ain't going so hot. Throughout his entire tenure, people deeply entrenched in the sport, particularly in Formula One, have been clamoring for Ben Soliam to hit the road. The disapproval of his presidency has only really ever been matched by the darker days of Jean-Marie Balestre or Max Mosley. He's even pissed off the owners of Formula One, Liberty Media, by suggesting that the sport's price tag has been inflated. Despite the fact that since buying the sport, Liberty has turned it from being a pretty damn big sport into a colossal giant. The drivers have no confidence in him. Manufacturers and constructors have no confidence in him. FOM has no confidence in him. No one has confidence in this guy. It's evident that there's a power struggle going on and people leaving their posts almost en masse within the FIA is not a good look. The only friction he hasn't caused so far is that one time that he stuck his weenus in a pencil sharpener. Okay, that may have been a bit low, but his reign as president of the FIA has created problems out of nothing issues. And don't take that from me. That's the opinion of people working in the sport. He's making life difficult for himself and it's making him look like a clown. It's dragging Formula One down and thus it's making the sport as a whole look like a joke. As if it needed any more help in doing that. But it's not all doom and gloom. It's not as if this is completely unsalvageable. He does have a chance to rescue himself from the pitfalls and lead the FIA in the way that we want him to. But that would require some self-reflection. Out of all of this, you almost yearn for the return of Jean Tot in a way, for he seemed to be the only semi-normal president that the FIA ever had. Sure, Muhammad may not have liked much of what I've got to say, but pff, come on, he's only the head of the FIA. What could he possibly do?